and we are on. We say all praises be to the creator, all power to his people. In the name of Yahshua, the black revolutionary Messiah, I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the spirit of truth and the words of peace. Shalom Aleichem. Giving a special salute to the black messiahs, our motto is stop waiting for a savior and be one. Stop waiting for a savior and be one. Today is the anniversary of the March on Washington. 1963 March on Washington led by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Fifty-seven years later, black folks are still marching. So we are going to deal with the subject, why are we marching and who is leading us? Why are we marching in 2020 and who is leading us? Let me start it off like this. I'm not a hater. Anything somebody's doing that they think is necessary, that ain't impacting my movement, salute. Salute. But I'm looking at the big picture. The big picture. Why are we marching in 2020? Why are we marching in 2020? I want everybody today to go back and listen to Malcolm X's message to the grassroots. And I'll put it in the comments later. Listen to Malcolm X's message to the grassroots because he called the 1963 March on Washington, he referred to it as a circus or something of that nature because the original March on Washington was largely controlled by white folks, do your research. Finance by white folks. One name in general that sticks out is Stephen Courier of the Tuconic Foundation. People don't mention him, but he financed a lot of the things, a lot of the civil rights thing. Stephen Curry got the civil rights leaders together and pay them off. Pay them off. See, there's something called controlled opposition. Anytime there is a it's racial unrest, they want to figure out how they can get in front of it just the way it was in 1963, according to Malcolm X. Again, listen to the message to the grassroots by Malcolm X. They want to get out in front of it and set the parameters. We're only going, we're going to fight between this wall and this wall. We're only going to allow this person to speak and that person to speak controlled opposition because the way this thing works you'll think you're fighting somebody and they are dictating the terms of the battle you think you are actually in a war with somebody and you calling the shots but it's already been Predetermined. Again, Malcolm X was clear on that. Message to the grassroots, Malcolm X. He was clear on that. Listen to that, please, today. What else I want to hit on? 
Don't be manipulated by the white liberals. Don't be manipulated them by white liberals. They will have, they have historically used black people as attack dogs. They have historically used black people as attack dogs. We get blamed, we get beat, we get shot. And then they use our suffering to push their agenda. They benefit off our suffering. Black Lives Matter. I'm so tired of white people benefiting and exploiting the suffering of black people. They will use anything to push their agenda. Do you have any proof, brother? Of course I do. Look at the Scottsboro Boys case where the Communist Party exploited those brothers to build up their communist movement in America. They will manipulate black guys in the guise of saving us because they know many of us have been psychologically trained. We're still looking for a white savior. And we don't care if it's white Jesus. Um, and we know he was black. But anyway, uh, John F. Kennedy, Joe Biden. Some of us even look for Donald Trump to save us. They know we're looking for a white man to come save us. And other than that, they give us hand-picked leaders who they pick, who are gonna ultimately lead us back to the white savior. You hear very few black leaders outside of Minister Farrakhan talking about self-determination. Why is that? Because the NAACP, as much as they blow up the NAACP as this big movement in 2020 with all these members, I guarantee you, if you go to your local NAACP office, if you can find it, you're gonna find three or four people, probably senior citizens, that's just a fact. That's just a fact. But you rarely hear them talking about self-determination. Why is that? Because Joel Spingarn of the NAACP. Read Plural But Equal by Harold Cruz. Joel Spingarn came up with something called non-economic liberalism. Non-economic liberalism. What's that, brother? Non-economic liberalism. It's the game that Joe Spingarn, white Jewish guy, and the NAACP came up with, whereby they would fight for Black integration but not black empowerment. They said, we will allow you all to fight to integrate a toilet, but not fight to own a restaurant. It's called non-economic liberalism, feel good policy. Because at the end of the day, many of us, 
just want to be loved by white folks. We want to be accepted by white folks. My life matters. Black life matters. That's the end game strategy. Wanting somebody white to recognize your humanity when you don't even recognize the kingdom of God that is within you. You're looking for a white man, a white woman to recognize your humanity when you don't even recognize the kingdom of God that's within you and that's in your Bible. Church folks, that's in your Bible. But most of y'all don't read it anyway. But I digress. Now, what's the other game being played? There was a book written, I think in the 1940s, called Who Speaks for the Negro? I got it on my shelf somewhere. Who Speaks for the Negro? There's always been a competition of who speaks for black folks. White people always need to know who is your leader? Who is your leader? Who can we call to call the thing off? So they always want to find out who is the black leader. That's why most of those black leaders are financed by white people, historically. You have exceptions, like Marcus Garvey. You have exceptions like Kwame Toure and others, and others. But they always need to know who is the Black leader. That's why they put the same black leaders on radio shows, TV shows, finance their marches. They need to know who is the black leader that we can negotiate with. That's why it scares them to death to think of black people leading themselves. See, they need a black messiah. They, they fear the rise of a black messiah. But what about the rise of black messiahs with no leadership, no centralized leadership? That scares them to death. They can prevent the rise of a black messiah as J. Edgar Hoover tried to do. But they can't prevent the rise of Black messiahs. People will stand up the dry bones when that spirit of the most high comes over them and will stand up as an exceedingly great arm. Black messiahs who they can't control. Kwame Toure said Every Negro is a potential black man. Twenty twenty, we say every black man is a potential black messiah. All of y'all and women and women, all of y'all who can lead our people to liberation. So, if you have small movements, don't get, get discouraged when you see thousands of people gathered and you start thinking that your little small movement isn't making a difference. Don't be discouraged. It's going to be little small movements that make the change. Guerrilla attack. Little small movements of like-minded people in each city. I think Tupac talked about that. 
I think Tupac said 50 people in each city. It's going to be little small movements who specialize in do doing certain things to liberate black people, whether it's history, economics, science, self-defense, small groups of people. You don't need the masses. It's always been the small groups of people with heart who have made the change. Look at the story of Gideon in your Bible. You can have too many people because most people are sheep. They're just going to follow the leader. I remember back in 88, 89, Public Enemy said their goal was to raise 5,000 leaders. My goal in 2020 is to raise 5,000 warrior scholars. 5,000 warrior scholars who can use the truth as a sword and a shield. That's our goal, family. So, as always, if you want more information, uh, follow me on social media. Um, Twitter at Truth Minister with the A. Go to the website blackmessiahmovement.com. Black Messiah Movement on Instagram and Black Messiah Movement on the YouTube channel. 2020 family. Why are we marching? Who are we following? Where are they leading us? Fundamental questions we have to ask. But I think the Black Messiahs have the best solution that they can't defeat. They can't sabotage. I think the Black Messiahs have the best solution in our motto. Stop waiting for a savior and be one. Shalom. So